Baby brother, y'all feeling me? Ah, oh, what a wonderful weekend it was! Trailblazer weekend, and I am pooped. But the show must go on, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the exceptional one. You are listening live to the Exceptional Conservative Network, TECN, better known, the most exceptional show in all of the world. It's the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then the Socialists. Gonna get that SHR feed going, oh my goodness. I'm loving that groove, oh my goodness. To my SHR family, forgive the delay. So glad to have you here tonight. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation. First to the Republican and then to the Socialists. I am your host, the exceptional one, Kevin McClinton. I am telling you, I am so excited about tonight. Uh, and about this groove. Oh my goodness. Ah! Uh. <laughs> Coming off a of Trailblazer weekend. What a wonderful opportunity to talk tonight to Leslie Ann Stoffel. Uh, she is from the Center for Israel in Jewish Affairs out of Canada, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? I feel I, I, I got to hit that groove one more time. Oh, my goodness. That groove was awesome. Ah. Ah. To the left. To the left. Ah. To the right. To the right. Get that groove on. I am so sorry. <laughs> We're going to talk about a very serious issue, and that's Sharia law being pushed in Canada. Why are we uniquely concerned? We're uniquely concerned, ladies and gentlemen, because what happens in Canada then moves to California. What happens in California becomes the law of the land. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Leslie will be here. We'll be talking with her. Uh, also coming up this particular evening uh, is Chanel Bats. She is the Red River TV founder. Uh, along with her husband, uh, and we're going to talk about Princess Joy Villa and the Trump dress scene around the world, baby. The world is woo, talking about the dress. All you have to do is walk down the street and say the dress, and you will get a reaction. Everybody knows the dress, uh, and Janelle Batch will be talking with us Uh and just a few. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live for the nation's cap. I really love that groove. <laughs> uh, Dave, we got to do something with that groove. Dave Milton, we're also going to be hearing um, a, uh, a, re a seven minute message from Dave later on in this particular hour. Um, I, I want to greet everyone. Uh, Dan the Man Butcher in there, thank you so much for having Melanie. Money Talk with Melanie, Mel Melanie uh, Collette on last night. Heard around the world, Dan. I, I heard she knocked it out of the park. <laughs> the way I heard it, I happened to be on the same program. We had we were on the round table on Dan Butcher's uh, radio program. He has returned. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, conservative Talk was missing you so much. Uh, also, I want to thank Claudia. Claudia, love you dearly. You are a beautiful woman. An absolutely beautiful woman. I uh, met her at Trailblazers uh, the weekend. Ah, just say, and so sweet and humble. I mean, ah, truly, truly love you. Uh, also, I uh, want to thank Dan, Dave Milner, forgive me, uh, who is the unpleasant blind guy. Uh, we'll be hearing a clip from him a little bit later on. Uh, and, of course, my beloved, my sweetheart, uh, Mary Brockman, who is my bouncer in chief. If you diss her, you diss me, and you will be whoop, dismissed from our program. Uh, I want to welcome everybody uh, to our chat roll. 
uh, this particular evening, the except the uh, T, forgive me, that's <laughs> the TECN uh, and Euro Pacific Bank Limited uh, chat row. Uh, I, I am telling you, very excited to have you all in here tonight. Uh, and I hope that you all looked at some of the pictures. I have not been able to download all the pictures. Unfortunately, I was, uh, I'm in study, uh, financial planning studies at this particular juncture. So, uh, some of my time is a little bit minute and we'll be over the next couple of days, but, uh, but so much we have to do and talk about. Uh, and I will make sure that you all have all that trailblazer information. It just works out that way sometimes. And, you know. uh, listen, we're going to pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And you all know how we get this party started with our kids. Okay. Uh, we're going to let them pledge allegiance to the United States. We want you to join us. The best way to do that is find a flag. There's one right over here, a big one for those who are live stream, and right over here for those who are watching via Ustream. And for those who are Red Nation Rising, SHR Media, and Sackheads Radio, uh, 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 put your hand over your heart. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you, kids. Really appreciate that. I uh, want to make certain that you all get to know this young woman, uh, Lastly Ann Stoffel. She's a non-Jewish supporter of Israel and the Jewish people. She studied at UBC, Sauter School of Business, uh, and works as an advocate in public relations and fundraising for the state of Israel. Uh, which I found to be quite pleasing. She's also one of the sweetest ladies. When you talk to her on the phone, uh, and, and please, those on the left, uh, don't get it twisted. As sweet as she is with me over the telephone, she will uh, strike. And so uh, we are calling her, even as we speak right now. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Leslie Stoffel. I uh, want to welcome her to the Exceptional Conservative Network. Hope that you all like the uh, picture of the uh, banner. Hello, is this speaking? Leslie Stoffel, this is Ken McClinton, host of the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from Washington, D.C., and you are on the air. It's a great pleasure to have you on with us. Oh, hi, Ken. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you are the okay and I, and I have to make this note very clear to to the left because a, a lot of people take our sweetness for weakness you are the sweetest lady in all of the world you really are uh but you are a viper when it comes to sharia law uh, <laughs> you are certainly pro israel <laughs> Exactly. I sure, I sure am. I, I take, I'm just taking the one-two punch right to the throat on them. <laughs> now, first and foremost, <laughs> Leslie, I, I want you to have this opportunity uh, to introduce yourself to the world. Uh, we gave off your bona fides uh, via the Canadian Jewish Advocacy Group, CIJA, that you are a part of. Uh, but I, I want you to tell America uniquely because uh, a lot of people in America just believe that we're ranting and raving and that we're rabid and angry, bitter old white men. Uh, and we just yeah. don't like the future. <laughs> uh, so can you uh, explain to people why uh, you began to support as a non-Zionist, uh, well, a, a, a non-Jew, uh, why do you support Israel so much? Well, it, it's quite interesting, Ted, how it came about. Um, it, my, my, I was brought up in a Zionist home. My mom was a Zionist, but she wasn't religious at all. And it, it was a secular home. And it, yeah. She was actually a, a New Ager, which was kind of weird. But uh, uh, so anyway, she had had 
she's a hairdresser, my parents were hairdressers, and she used to sell wigs, and she had this Jewish client, and this lady, uh, Bluma, said, you know, my mom was asking her things about Israel and stuff like that, and this lady told her to read the book, Oh Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and it had a lasting impact on her, so she, you know, understood, uh, she was a little girl when um, Israel was reborn as a, as the Jewish state in 1948. And she said when they used to go to the, the movies back then, they would show the news reels on the movie theater, and it was showing how Israel was being reborn as the Jewish state and all this stuff. <laughs> so it really had an impact on her, and it carried it through with her through her life. And uh, as I didn't be, uh, you know, become knowledgeable of Bible stuff around all this at all, well, let me stop for a minute. Then uh, when I was a teenager, uh-huh. uh, we had books, we had books around the house about Gold of My Year and, and Emotion Diana and that kind of stuff. So those characters were, were familiar to me. And then I would see things on the news about, you know, uh, the, the, the IDF, the Israel Defense Forces. And I thought, wow, these, these guys look so, uh, you know, brave and strong. And that was at the time when the Jewish, when Israel was getting positive press. Uh, it soon changed after that when the Palestinian thing came into it. But Okay, then as it went along, then I learned about the Holocaust, and I thought, well, gee, you know, in my in my uh, naive case, I thought, well, if I just say something about the 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 this stuff, then it'll stop, of course. And and so as I grew older, then I realized, well, I was going to really have to say something because things were really turning darkly against the Jewish people and Israel, and they were becoming the bad guy and all this stuff. So I went to Israel, I, I, I was, uh, in my 20s I learned about the Bible and, mm-hmm. and Jerusalem and, and, and God's city and, and all this stuff and the, his, the, the biblical history there and the archaeology and all that. And then I went to visit Israel in 2008 with my mom and uh, actually Pastor Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel who had been my pastor in, in California, I'm now back in Canada but I have lived uh, there. He was there at the time, so it was quite exciting, really. It was my first time in Israel, and it actually brought tears to my eyes to see that God really did bring the Jewish people back home to their land that you could read about in the Bible mm-hmm. and in history, in Josephus and all these things. And then um, it, it, seeing what they did in the country in a short 60-year span was unbelievable because this place was just a rocky uh Hills, all the trees had been gone. Uh, it was marshes and, and infested with mosquitoes and all this stuff. And <clears throat> they literally planted trees. They, the, 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 the land was bequeathed to them, of course, through the Torah, but also through, uh, I did this research later on, through international law, through the San Remo Resolution in 1920, actually, in the 20s, uh, through the League of Nations, and then that was adopted by the United Nations. And so um, I could see that, and they also had to buy this land from uh, absent, absentee Arab owners, or because this land had been part of the caliphate that broke up mm-hmm. after World War One. So uh, the Ottoman Empire. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff there. But this, this is how it all sort of seeped into my soul and into my spirit. And I felt, you know, I'd always have ever since really. I came to know about the Bible, I realized, you know, the Jewish people had a special place in my heart. I guess God just puts that in you, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, so, anyway, when I came back from Israel in 2008, I realized that Facebook could be used as a, as a, as a, as a media page to do pro-Israel stuff and speak about the jihad that was going around the world. You see, the jihad, the Palestinian movement is just, it's part of the global jihad, that's all it is. And so it's, 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 it's manifesting all over the world now. And so I speak against Sharia, yep. uh, you know, inflicting Sharia on the West, uh, and also the global jihad, the violent jihad that's going on against the Jews. Yep. And so that, and against that, and that grew and grew. So basically then when I went to Israel back in 2011 to it was some friends, the people there got to know me. I, I was invited to the Knesset with, and I, so I met uh, um, uh, the Druze member of Knesset, Ayukara, and his uh, chief of staff, Mendy Safadi. And so I went back and forth there a number of times for different meetings and things. And then I got to know people within the, you know, the, over the green line, so to speak, within Judea and Samaria. So I'd go to stay with friends in 
you know, have rolled for, for, for uh, Shabbat, and uh, I got to know people in the media, and then I started writing myself, and I started my webpage, therealclearisrael.org, because all of this was just lost me so much. I had to put everything in one spot, and um, and so then I started my own, uh, uh, last year I started my own blog talk radio called Real Clear Israel Radio, so I've had Geller, Spencer, Dr. Gorka, uh, Tommy Roth, uh, Anne Marie Waters, Martin Sherman, I mean, I, you name it, I've had it on show to, to speak out on these issues in, in a very concrete and, and substantial way. <clears throat> so that's basically what's brought me to this point wow. in the shell of a nut. Wow. Listen, uh, you are a mighty warrior uh, for truth, uh, not only on Blog Talk, but in your blogs, uh, in your support uh, for uh, the Canadian Israel uh, Jewish uh, Advocacy Group, uh, but there are those, and, and and we just had a march here in Washington D.C. Uh, as we we're talking with Leslie Ann Stoffel, where there were like a half million women that came here, and they're trying to explain to America that the plight of womanhood is so severely uh, ostracizing in America. Uh, that 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 really uh, things have got to change, and so I I, I want to ask you uh, in Canada uh, with the onset of people moving and supporting Sharia law, have the women of America really missed the mark in terms of global totalitarianism uh, and the actual impact of sh of jihadism, or at least? Uh, the Mohammedan cult uh, on society. I, I think they have. You know, many people. This is just what I, how I see it. So many people have been brainwashed with moral relativism and cultural Marxism within schools, within you know, school, within university, within our society as a whole, um, and then we're 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 uh, untied with political correctness. So, I, I from my from where I'm standing, it looks like so people, including these women, have have literally lost their ability to reason, even when as ugly and barbaric and and savage Sharia law is staring them in the face, and we can see what's happening all over the world. They'll still even when this is looking at them straight on, they'll say it's not happening. Yep. I mean, if this isn't a mental disorder, I, I don't know what is. <laughs> you know, I, I grace I, <laughs> I grace you with great joy in that regard uh, because uh, it, it's amazing how the left are able to uh, diagnose uh, psychological illnesses uh, against political leaders who become president. Uh, but can't see the uh, the dredged uh, pain and suffering of their own psychological uh, diversions. Uh, and you're ever so right in yeah. this regard. And, and when I was listening to the women who were wearing the pink hats, uh, they spoke about yeah. uh, Planned Parenthood and the support of uh, immigration. And they spoke of everything, but, but women and... Uh, cultures like the Middle East, uh, and I, I applaud you uh, for taking up the mantle and speaking about Sharia law, not just about the gender, but there is a concern that there are liberals throughout the world who do not mind a totalitarian regime like Mohammedism, uh, and, and is it because they are ignorant of Mohammedism, or is it because it fits with being totalitarian as it is on the left. There's a number of things that are, are going on here. I think some of them are actually converting to Islam, mm -hmm. which there's a big rumor that our, our prime minister has. We don't know for sure, but there's pictures and video of him in a mosque saying that he's compared and all that, dressed like a Muslim. Whoa! Okay! 
Uh, let's put a pin in my question. Let's put a pin in my question here. Wait a minute. Uh, because we had former President uh, um, Barack Obama who said that the greatest sound he ever heard was the call to prayer in the morning. Uh, he, uh, in the final months, visited mosque uh, as well. Uh, and there was always a question about whether he was a Christian or not. Uh, and you're telling yeah. me that the Canadian Prime Minister, Trudeau, is possibly a convert to Mohammedism. Oh, this is, bro this yeah. is blockbusting right here. Oh, my God. Tell, tell the world about this. <laughs> Well, if they go on, if they can Google it, because there are actual video and pictures of this, him dressed in those, in the clothes of a Muslim, and he's saying Muslim prayers, and, okay, there's a, 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 a Muslim here in Canada, his name's Tarek Fatah, and he's a secular Muslim, and he speaks out against uh, the, um, uh, against Sharia and all this stuff, so... He wrote in the Toronto Sun. People can actually Google that as well. His his article in the Toronto Sun. <laughs> he wrote this story actually, and he said that anybody who does those things in a mosque, they have to be a Muslim to do them. So uh, I don't know. I mean, the guy he is so. I mean, in the gut, he will not. He's like Obama. He absolutely refuses to see any negativity about. Islam, absolutely, and it's it, it's so it's so frustrating because there were six little girls, six young girls under sixteen, just molested in a pool in West the West Edmonton Mall the other day by a Syrian refugee, and that was they tried to cover that up. There was no mention from Trudeau about that. Our CBC, which is like the BBC, is our it's basically the propaganda arm of the government. They do all the covering up and everything for for the Liberal Party, <clears throat> who Trudeau is a part of, and they are the governing party now, <clears throat> they ask, they actually ask in their, um, on, a, on their website, should we be reporting, if it's a Syrian refugee doing these sexual assaults, should we be reporting that to the, to the public? Are you like, serious? Should we be covering that up? <laughs> you you not oh my that? God! All oh, this just, oh, this is, I, it's it's like and forgive me, Leslie, because I know you're speaking truthfully because it's happened here and also in Germany and France and Great Britain yeah. and, and it happens in, in in the Middle East and it happens around the world and so but it's like it's like you're moving in slow motion around everything else that's yeah. moving fast around you and people just don't understand that the left yeah. has embraced Mohammedism. They have. They literally have. They are enemies to us, to normal people. They are enemies of us. You know what he calls us? He calls us fringe. He calls a normal person who is brought up to be a, all of a sudden, you, you know, you're brought up to be this patriot person who loves your country and everything. All of a sudden they do a switcheroo with the language and you're a white nationalist fringer, <laughs> anti-Muslim right winger. <laughs> it is homophobic. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, talk about the great switcheroo, and your head is spinning. You're like, huh? What? How did this happen? Exactly. I was just a normal person going to school, uh, you know, doing my thing, and all of a sudden, I'm like an Islamophobic, bright fringe, blah 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 blah. I don't think so. Exactly. Tonight. And I took it upon myself to uh, fight back and give a big punch right in the nose. To that jerk of a prime minister of ours, and I wrote my article that was the title PM of Canada, Justin Trudeau, smears all Canadians with the lie of Islamophobia in order to create a Sharia state. And that got everybody's attention. Mm. We're talking tonight with a bold warrior, uh, Leslie Ann Stoffel, and I, I, hopefully, I can call you my friend. Uh, because I see you as my oh, friend uh, and joint arms here. <laughs> uh, it, it's an immense pleasure, firstly, to have a uh, woman of Canada who is not afraid, because really this is dangerous um, 
for her to speak this way in Canada. And we're going to talk about that in just a few. But uh, Canada has lost its uh, pursuit of liberty uh, is it in embracing uh, totalitarianism in the sense of shutting down and censoring uh, voices of, of, of opposition. Now, I, I, know, I, I know that Canada uh, follows America and has moved very far to the left thanks to uh, the image of Barack Hussein Obama. And I hope that, like a rubber band, you all bounce back towards a more conservative approach. But uh, you have a prime, minister, a prime minister who, right now, uh, there's a question mark in terms of what his belief system is, uh, worldwide yeah. belief system. But also the, the the concept here that there are ministers uh, in the parliament uh, who have signed on board with turning Canada into a Sharia state. Uh, and, and is that first and foremost? Is that real? <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. This woman who has brought forth this um, this motion. To um, bring before our parliament, it's motion M103. She is a Pakistani, and she's actually a Muslim Brotherhood operative. There was another. Uh, there was a very, um, very brilliant young girl here, young woman here in Canada, Stephanie McWilliams. If people look in my on my article, I don't know if they have it, but if they look on my article that was posted on Pamela Geller's blog, uh, the Geller Report, Stephanie McWilliams found out that this this. Uh, this uh, is what's her name, Ikra Khalid, is from Pakistan, and, and she was uh, a part of the she was a uh, part of the Muslim Students Association of York University, and that is actually an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, and they left that part out of Ikra Khalid's uh, website when she, as she is an official Liberal Party, on her official Liberal Party website, that is left out. And um, so there's some sneaky shenanigans going on here. And um, wow. uh, the other part of this is Justin Trudeau spent New Year's at the Aga Khan's private island, uh, but hid it from Canadians. Like all of a sudden he disappeared for a few days, nobody knew where he was. And this is actually a, a problem with ethics because he was flying on the guy's airplane or helicopter or something. Anyway, it turns out he's being investigated now for ethics uh, issues over this. And it's so clinky dinky that all of a sudden he comes back from visiting the Aga Khan and all of a sudden they're putting through Sharia law, blasphemy laws into Canada. And, um, <laughs> so, you know, they were, oh and they were going to, yeah, and they were going to try to push this, but nobody was talking about this, Ken. Nobody was talking about this, and I grabbed hold of it and realized it was coming up really fast. I did my my article. I sent it to everybody, and all of a sudden, then a lot of people started doing uh, videos and, and articles and all this sort of stuff, and now it's being really talked about. And that woman, that Ikra Khalid, she did not go to the Canadian people. She went to the left stream rag of BuzzFeed, the fake news site, and Huffington Post to plead her case with Takia, and she actually quoted my quote in the article where I say the Prime Minister of Canada, uh, in order to push this forward, Trudeau has diabolically employed psychological warfare tactics created by the Muslim Brotherhood and has smeared the entire Canadian population with the lies that they are Islamophobic. Now, she used that quote in those BuzzFeed. And, my, and that, you know, that they're not very smart because she, they just proved my point, really. I mean, by pointing out the worst part of my article, they actually pointed to themselves and made themselves look so negative and made people, like, wake up, like, what's going on here? And so they branded themselves. They, per, they did a persuasion thing in the wrong way, in our favor. You know what I mean? And then they also posted the, like the, the photo that Geller used was this Sharia woman in, a, in one of those uh, full body deals. And it says, Sharia will dominate the world. And that's the picture they used to, to, um, to do their debate 
against what I was saying. And it actually proved my point again because it, it plants in people's minds the negativity of what they're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I know exactly what you're saying, Les. We're talking with Leslie uh, Stoffel, uh, who is a great advocate uh, for Israel in Canada. Uh, and she's a non-Jewish supporter of Israel and the Jewish people uh, with the Canadian Jewish Advocacy, a writer, a blogger, uh, and a true uh, woman of media power expressing the truth of what's happening in our friend to the north. I, I mean, really, this is happening at our border. Everyone's talking about the border yeah. Mexico we should be equally concerned about what's happening at the border, Canada, uh, where they are embracing Mohammedism uh, from the top down with Prime Minister uh, Trudeau on uh, and using every, uh, every matter uh, that they possibly can discover or devise to institute Sharia law in Canada. And I, I, I want to know, first and foremost, where is the... Where is the outlash uh, from Canadian people? Are, have the Canadians just gone completely soft and said, forget it, we just want to kumbaya our way through uh, the next millennial? No. Actually, now that they, people have found out about this, people are really, really bad. And, and when I see um, like my article or other articles about it, and there's just article come out today that actually there are some uh, conservative uh, members of parliament now they weren't before but they are now because they're getting pressure they're coming out against this they're going to vote against it and um, um, on all like 95 percent of the comments on these things and on twitter things canadians are totally against it and want it stopped and really Levant from the, yeah and ezra levant from the rebel media because the, uh, most people didn't even know this was happening I, it was being. It was. It wasn't even being talked about in our media. That's why I jumped on the bandwagon, and then others did too, to quickly get people to know about this because it was just going to go straight through. And I made a big deal out of this too. Like I took it and I rebranded it. And don't you dare call us Islamophobic. You prove it. And then on the other hand, I said that on the other part of it, I rebranded it. This is a problem for the U.S. government, because you're going to have a serious problem on your hands with a Sharia state on your border. And I sent it because Sebastian Gorka had been on my show, and he's now in Trump's uh, administration, um, President Trump's um, cabinet or whatever, yes. as a deputy assistant. I sent it to him, I, and I was tweeting lots of stuff about this to Seb Gorka. I sent it to the president, and I sent it, I made sure they knew that they were trying to sweep, get uh, under the uh, under the radar, so nobody would know, and I made sure that that could not happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Leslie Stoffel. We gotta go to a break, um, I, and forgive me in my discipline or lack of it uh, uh, for all those who are broadcasting us live, at SHR Media, uh, also HP Talk Radio uh, dot com, High Plains Pundit Media, and all those who are listening to us at two a.m. on the Liberty Channel. Uh, on Red Nation Rising. Ladies and gentlemen, you all have been focused on the southern border for a long time. Uh, and we have had concerns and complaints of people from Afghanistan and other uh, nations that were jihadist rebels who were trying to cross our borders. You may not have to worry anymore about the jihadists crossing the borders because they seem to be making themselves well at home in Canada. Uh, that's unless uh, Leslie Stoffel can do something about it. We'll be right back with more of the best in urban conservative talk right after these messages. Mm. My name is Willie Lawson of the Willie Lawson Show here on the Exceptional Conservative Network, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. They told me that I needed to be humble. 
but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I decided to be awesome instead. That's the Willie Lawson Show, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. here on the Exceptional Conservative Network. From day's first light to night's last glimmer, your satisfaction is our responsibility. On the range or in the field of duty, you can rely on Brownell's lifetime guaranteed gun parts, tools, and supplies anytime, any place. It's how we've done business since 1939. Brownells. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. The best late-night conservative talk show in America. I can't radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air to give you the best in conservative talk than Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clan. Uh, and uh, we're working on some immigration papers for a certain other guy who happens to work here, too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, Pack His Radio. Hark, 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 you. Hark, 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 you. Hark, 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 you. Hark, 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 you. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. It's a love story like no other. From God's heart to yours. And for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com. Everything Christian. Because it's our story, too. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, what a power pack first hour. Whoa. Uh, very good friend, Leslie Stoffel, Leslie Ann Stoffel, who is at the center for Israel and as well uh, Jewish Affairs, CIJA in Canada, is joining us. Uh, and so Leslie, Leslie is joined us in the chat room as well. So I'm going to ask Leslie to uh, just scroll up just a little bit and stop the Ustream that's playing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I noticed it through that. I don't know how Okay, just stop it. Oh, yeah. dear. Press the arrow. Okay. Yeah, go over the top. And press it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's, it's right next to the um, to the speaker uh, portion of the UStream live streaming video for UStream. Uh, you just click on that arrow, uh, and it'll stop it from playing. Perfect. I don't know why I'm so stupid. I can't see it. Oh no no no! It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, well. It really is. No worries. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's in blue. It's in blue. It's a it's a white oh, arrow, well. right arrow in a blue. Maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll say 
I'll, I'll figure that out for next time. Next time, yeah, don't worry about it. But perfect, Leslie. We're so glad yeah. to have you on the air with us uh, this particular day. Uh, listen, um, Prime Minister Trudeau uh, has done a wonderful and marvelous outreach on behalf of the left uh, to uh, those who happen to be uh, Mohammedans, uh, part of the cult of the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, he met earlier today uh, with. Um, okay. Oh, I get it there. Here, I'll just close that. Okay, cool. All right. I can't, because I can't get it to stop. No, no problem. Okay. No problem whatsoever. We'll work it out, because I might have you on my network. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after, Leslie. We will. I like I like okay. your spirit. I like your spirit. That's the type of spirit we need on my network. Listen, um, oh, thank you. Listen, Leslie, there, yeah. pe there are people who are listening to you tonight, uh, and they're saying... Um, Ken, uh, I, I think it's wrong for you all to be so vitriolic and so hateful towards uh, the Muslims. Uh, and, and, and after all that they have done for America and for uh, our North America, for our, for our nations or whatever, we should be tolerant of them. Uh, yeah. But I, 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 I want to ask you, have they been so tolerant of Canadians, in your in your opinion, and based on the evidences that you've seen in Canada, actually no. And you know, I'm not mentioning Muslims as individuals per se. I I'm talking about Sharia law, like Dr. Warner does. Yes. I go after sh the Sharia and, and the Jihad. Um, I don't because there are uh, there are individual Muslims like Tarek Fata. I mean. Ibn Warwick, there's different ones. I mean, they're few and far between because they are, they they get um, uh, threatened, you know, with death threats uh, if they speak out. But, okay, that, that's, there are individual Muslims who don't follow the Sharia. But what I'm getting at is I'm going above and beyond that into the philosophical, I guess you'd call it, argument, which is I have a duty and an and a right to protect my Western culture values. My forefathers died for what I have now. I'm going to fight to the death to keep it. And I don't care what name somebody calls me because Sharia law is incompatible with a Western uh, democracy. But wait a minute. A liberal Western democracy? Wait a minute, Leslie. Sorry. Wait a minute, Leslie. There have been lots of Mohammedans who have come to our portion of the world and things have been fine. They built mosques and, and life is good and, and they work and they contribute to society and they pay taxes. What are you talking about that is not compatible? Sharia law has got to be compatible because they practice it every day, right? Well, it, it really isn't because they're not um, integrating with the rest of the culture around them. What I'm saying is don't what I'm saying is is, uh, is what I'm saying against this e e e mm -hmm. Don't bring Sharia blasphemy laws into my parliament because I use the death to stop that. I will not have it. Uh, I have laws in my country. We have a charter of rights and freedoms here. All this is covered. What this is is now that we know, we know the um, what the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, um, plan is, if anyone um, in Canada, if anyone's listened to Brigitte Gabrielle for Ask for America, mm -hmm. they have found documents by the Muslim Brotherhood that say we're going to destroy their miserable house from within. So this is what this is. This Islamophobia is a is a, a made up word by the Islamic, um, the Muslim Brotherhood to pe keep people from speaking out against the atrocities and the savagery and the Sharia law. Yeah. So, given the fact that there are good Muslims out there, I, I know there are. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, don't bring. If, if you want to come, if you want to come here and give up and renounce your Sharia law, renounce all forms of jihad. That's cool. That's great. But if you're not going to, if you're going to bring it and try to force it on me, 
I won't have it. Wow. Wow. I'm not going to be nice about it. Th thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Leslie. And I'm telling you, she's the sweetest <laughs> woman in the world. She's just so sweet. <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> I, you know, I really am. I am so nice. I, I want to get along with people. I, you know, I love people. I am so nice. <laughs> until I'm not. You know, just don't go over that line and, and you'll be just fine with me. Well, Leslie, let me do this because we're going to run out of time here. Um, but I do have an important question to ask you. And I, I want to talk with you in all seriousness uh, because there's a morning spot on my network. Um, that I love your ver I love your whim, uh, I love your verb. Uh, I I think your passion fits it. I don't know. We'll have a talk to see if you fit at 7 a.m. in the morning on a Friday morning here in, in America. Uh, but that's oh a, wow yeah that type of passion is important because and here's the question and I'll let you give an opportunity to as well tell people where they can connect with you and like you on Facebook and all that other kind of stuff you know social media stuff. Um, but are the, are the women in North America completely blind to what happens to a nation like Iran in 1979, like Afghanistan in 1976, and many other Muslim nations when Sharia law is enforced? Well, it seems as though many of them are, uh, are blind to it. Now, I don't know what the answer is, except to just keep on preaching the truth. And hopefully, you know, there are some who are never going to get it. Mm -hmm. And some who will get it. I don't really waste my time on the ones who will get it. My, 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 my um, base of people that I've always tried to reach through social media, whatever the case may be, uh, if it's, you know, people about Israel or whatever, it's not those hater types who are completely just giving themselves over to to um, having no moral base whatsoever. I try to reach the people who are reasonable and want to see the truth and want to see our uh, Western civilization still standing and still uh, going forward and not being usurped with mm -hmm. this foreign... Uh, foreign uh, barbaric seventh uh, century law. Exactly. Now, uh, when when I, I mentioned, uh, uh, forgive me for taking you over. I, I had not meant to spend more than thirty minutes talking with Leslie this evening with all the stuff that's going. On, but Leslie's passion <laughs> so fits what America. You all should be ringing the bell. The Paul Revere should be running the entire gambit of Canada's border at this point, telling everyone that's yeah. about what's happening in Canada. Forget about the border down south. My God, the border above us is going to be a big problem if Muslim Brotherhood becomes established uh, through uh, a, a proposition. And I want to talk with you real quick about that proposition. We have been told that it's not a bill. It's not a law. It's not a legislative request or anything. It's just merely an inquiry. Leslie, how come, how come you're so excited about an inquiry? All they want to do is... Try to find out why you all hate Mohammedans so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, what see what it is? What everybody who's written about this and talked about it and even uh, 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 Corn uh, Concordia University, uh, a Jewish Lebanese uh, professor, Gad Fad, has said this is a problem because first of all, it singles out the word Islamophobia and 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 which isn't even definable, and it all. Also gives the, it asks the government to do these big uh, sweeping um, um, uh, inquiries mm -hmm. to, to find out about Islamophobia and squash it. So uh, it's just nonsensical. It's bringing nonsensical uh, language and, and bringing it closer and closer into making law. Now, somebody else made a comment and said, um, actually, it calls on the Heritage Committee to commence a study on eliminating Islamophobia. The study could then recommend laws. <laughs> this can do is it can recommend laws to pursue this nebulous goal. And if they do, there's a good chance they'll be dragged up laws that will drag that will bring people uh, 
uh, that will drive that law, that will criminalize anyone who dares stand up to the many unsavory parts of Orthodox Islam. So those who think this bill is harmless are unaware of the human, provincial human rights commissions in Canada that can drag people through the courts and, and do all sorts to them. So we must stop this in its path. We must cut it off at the path. And the bottom line is Islamophobia, which isn't even real, should not be discussed in our parliament. Exactly. Listen. We run out of time, but this is the type of passion that you will find on TECN, the Exceptional Conservative Network, with all of our great programming, uh, and certainly with our great guest, Leslie Ann Stoffel. Uh, and I'm telling you, she is the prettiest, sweetest woman when you look at her, and, and you would you, you would swear you would swear she's not like this, but she is hardcore, man. I tell you, you gotta love her. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, and tell everybody how they can hook I've up with you. Really, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a sense of humor too. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't just ra ra rave all day. I don't, I, I laugh, but I'm really nutty. But um, <laughs> so people can get a hold of me. My website is <laughs> therealclearisrael.org. So they can, they can, uh, if they scroll down the very bottom, my web, uh, my email is there. All of they can follow me on all my. My social media, Twitter, Real Clear Israel on Twitter, Real Clear Israel on Facebook, and Leslie Ann Stoffel on Facebook. They can read my blogs and articles uh, on my webpage. But I put everything on the webpage just so it would be easier to find. And um, I work for United with Israel, which um, is really great because right now we're planting trees to cover, to cover the places where the uh, fires burn the trees away. So if they go to unitedwithisrael.org, they can plant trees right now. So I'm just putting a plug in for that, too. Listen, I, I, and Dave Milner, who's in our chat room, I hope that you get a chance to go in there while uh, Jeff Mitchell is in the chat room as well. Uh, and, of course, my lovely bouncer-in-chief, Mary Brockman. They will all tell you uh, that if you stayed on the air with Ken McClinton for more than 30 minutes, uh, you were a great interview. So... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, I look forward to following up with, with you and talking. Get in the chat room because uh, nobody will hear you okay. anymore. Uh, yeah, and, I will. I've got to get ready. I've taken on an extra job a few evenings to save up to go back to Israel. So I've got to get ready for work in a few minutes. But I will stay, stay a few minutes in there. That would be great. We, they, were all, everyone. they were all love yeah, to say please. hello to you. God bless yeah, you. Please don't. Please, please talk to your Congress people and ask them to put pressure on our Canadian government not to bring in Sharia law here, Sharia blasphemy laws. Thank you. Thank you. That is Leslie and Stoffel. Uh, what a great, great friend. Uh, and little do you all know, y'all know who's listening tonight. She might be the newest addition. We're, we're going to talk. We're going to see. We're, we'll work that thing through. I tell you what. Y'all need to stay around for the... You thought that was a big hour. Hour number two, baby. Hour number two. Janelle Kadar Bates. Bats, forgive me, will be joining us from Red Round TV. Oh, man. We're going to talk about the dress scene around the world. Old to Donald Trump. Make America great. Princess Joy Villa last night. She rocked it. We're going to talk with Janelle about that and so much more. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show on the Exceptional Conservative Network, live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, but it is the power of liberation, first to the Republican and then to the Socialists. We'll be back. Hey, hey Melanie, before I go, Melanie, ain't that a cool groove right there? Get a brother up and tell him that's a cool groove. Kick it! Ah! Uh, you know it! Ah! Uh. So, what do you think about ebooks? Maybe you've never read an ebook before, but you're considering giving it a try. 
Or maybe you've been reluctant to try ebooks because you don't want to buy another expensive electronic device. Or maybe you already enjoy ebooks, but you haven't been able to find titles from your favorite Christian authors. Whatever your situation, ChristianBook.com has the solution. Your trusted source for print books for over 30 years now offers ebooks. Our always free CBD reader allows you to read on the devices you already own without spending money on a new device. Thousands of Christian ebooks at ChristianBook.com means you can shop with confidence and choose from the titles you want. Plus, we are adding new titles all the time. Browse our huge selection of low priced Christian ebooks the same way you would printed books, only now you can go from shopping to reading in seconds. Simply select the ebook you wish to purchase, confirm your account information, and start reading. Free samples of every ebook are available so you can preview the book first before you buy it. Plus, there's no lengthy app downloads and updates. Accessing the CBD Reader is as easy as going to cbdreader.christianbook.com and bookmarking the page. The CBD Reader holds your ebooks and bookmarks for you, no matter what device you're on. So, you can take your entire ebook library wherever you go and pick up right where you left off. Our customizable options make it possible to read your ebooks in different font sizes and styles. Want a large print version? You've got it in seconds with a simple click of the mouse. Already own a dedicated e-reader? Download your ebooks to your computer from your christianbook.com account and transfer them to your device. Try ebooks at christianbook.com and start reading your favorite books in seconds. Easy, economical, everywhere you want to read. Welcome to christianbook.com ebooks. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today. My name is Christopher Arnold. I'm an executive chef of Infused Restaurant. And today I'm going to walk you through some of the meals that we prepare here. So we're making a pizza. We use a fresh Italian sausage. And then we cook here and slice it up. Our pizza dough is Pepper Jack cheese. 
need for this burger. Two bites and I'm a bitch. Yes, you should. You better order it now. 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland is the place to be. Good eating, dining for you and me. Yes, Infuse, Infuse Restaurant, 6339 Allentown Road, Temple Hills, Maryland. It is the home of the exceptional one. Two big burgers with all the bacon. Y'all saw it a few weeks ago. I ate it and probably didn't have to eat for a whole month after that. It's just a huge burger. But if you're a vegan, they got vegan food too. My wife likes that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. But real men, that's the place to be. And a great atmosphere. Uh, Mary Brockman, I don't eat at McDonald's. I would take you to Infuse Restaurant when, if you came to do it. We don't work that thing out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Exceptional Conservative Show, live from the nation's capital. Uh, we are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is a power liberation, first to the Republican and then to the Socialists. Uh, tonight we're going to have, uh, wow, what a great interview with Leslie Ann Stoffel, uh, who is an advocate for uh, Israel and Canada, fighting harsh uh, opposition uh, from the left. In Canada as they are attempting to make Canada a Sharia state yes yes they are and I yes I I, I don't think y'all I, I don't want y'all to think I was blowing smoke I will be talking with her I love her passion I love her passion that's the type of passion I like on my network I really do uh, a network that Melanie Brock uh, forgive me Melanie Collette is in the chat room. She's one of the hosts on our program, Money Talk with Melanie. Uh, did a wonderful job last night with um, the roundtable that was put together by Dan Butcher over at High Plains uh, Pundit Media. Great, great, great uh, interview. Great show. Uh, you know, the the hosts of this program or on this network, forgive me, are so great. Dan doesn't even need me anymore. He, he doesn't need. He, call, he can call any one of these people that and, and that's going to actually happen. Mary Brockman is my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me. You will be dismissed. So glad to have Claudia in the chat room. Dave Snowbro Milner. Uh, keep that uh, two feet to yourself. Uh, Jeff Mitchell. God bless you. Welcome uh, to the chat room, the Euro Pacific Bank Limited TECN chat room. Uh, so glad to have you. Uh, he is a staunch advocate uh, for liberty and freedom. Uh, and Great Britain, uh, the host of English Defense League. So we're honored to have you in our chat room uh, at this hour uh, of the night for you, for the night for us as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want you to know that there are a great many, and I do mean a great many, uh, voices for conservative conservatism uh, in America. I was interviewed today by, uh, what's his name? Listen, I'm going to give him a shout out because he says uh, the, the, after the Trailblazer, he came over to me and told me he wanted to interview me. He did this afternoon. Uh, D. Kevin McNair, who is the editor of the Washington Informer, uh, he said it's going to be out. And if it's out in time, I will make certain uh, that you get it uh, and um, make it available to you as well. Um, but they were, he was saying, where are the conservative voices? I didn't, you know, for a lot of African American, Negro, colored, black, however way you wish to say it, individuals who were uh, there over the weekend, they didn't know that there were so many black conservatives. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is a powerful voice out of Oklahoma. Uh, and we are going to be graced by that voice in just a few seconds. Janelle Kadar Bass uh, is one of those particular voices, along with her husband. Uh, give a shout out. He says that after the Trump raising, he had to go to me and told me he wanted to interview me. He was the best man. Uh, he said that he had with editor. Well, I sound real good. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. He said that he had to go to me. Where are the conservative voices, right? You know, for a lot of African-American, Negro, colored, black, 
Mr. Nail Bats. <laughs> the How are you? Just, How are you? Sir? Just fine. <laughs> it's a great honor to have you on the air. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, I send you uh, great uh, salutations for your success and your husband's success for Red River TV. Uh, as I was mentioning in that particular uh, yeah. replay there, that uh, people keep asking where are all the conservative voices that happen to be black, Hispanic. Native American and so on. Now I'm just wondering why they aren't opening their eyes. There are many of us. Uh, unfortunately, our narrative isn't uh, carried. And so I, I want to ask you first and foremost to tell everyone about Red River TV and about the work that you and your husband do. Uh, well, you know, my husband and I. Um, it probably started about five years ago when uh, we first started to uh, to actually just start writing and my husband was really the person that that kind of started it and um, it kind of just went from there you know we really started to write about uh, things that matter uh, particularly in the state of Oklahoma we actually live in Texas but uh, Oklahoma is um, is our is our home we consider it to be our home and so things that happen politically um, in the state of Oklahoma are very important to us and um, that's what we started to write about that kind of gravitated into um, a website and then now Red River TV. Uh, Red River Chronicle is the actual website where you can find uh, lots of good information. My husband and I, we share news there. We have uh, uh, news feeds there. We have our videos that we do for Red River TV is there. Uh, articles that we write and publish are there. We're going to be you know, bringing on new writers um, pretty soon. and. Red River TV is actually a branch of the Red River Chronicle, and um, it was kind of interesting because it was something that, that we kind of wanted to do, uh, but just wasn't able to, to do it at the time, and and so um, we do about one to two videos a week where it's just, uh, you know, him and myself just discussing what's happening politically, not only in the nation, but uh, now that session has started in Oklahoma, we're going to be trying to cover as much of that as, as possible. So it's been interesting. It, it's um, it's fun being a husband and wife uh, team writer. It can make for very interesting conversations. My husband carries uh, some libertarian views, and that also makes our conversation very interesting. <laughs> but, um, but it's been good. It, it's been good. We've been blessed to not only be able to, to speak out and use things like social media, use the passion that God has given us, um, but to really just begin to spread the message uh, of um, really what liberalism is doing in America, and that, like you said, there are voices out there uh, who stand for conservatism. Now, when they what I call objective conservatism exactly, uh, when individuals speak about uh, not hearing the voices, I, I think they spend more time patting themselves on the back because they have tried to silence those voices uh, by taking yeah. them off the airways. Uh, and I, before we go on, because I had the great pleasure of listening to you talk about objective conservatism. And, and now, one of the yeah. things that many people think is that conservatives agree wholeheartedly across the board. I mean, we all sing from the same hymn pages. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. virtually. Uh, and I, I don't know that to be the case for me. I, people call me an extreme conservative. Uh, what say you in terms of that? What, how do you define an objective conservative? I believe that uh, really what objective conservatism looks like is it is not about um, it's it's not about blindly following the R or you mm -hmm. know behind someone's name. You know, I always joke and say that the R doesn't exactly stand for righteousness <laughs> behind a politician's name, mm -hmm. and so it's really about. Um, it's really getting behind freedom. It's getting behind we the people, and not um, not necessarily um, getting behind government 
just depending upon who's president or who's the new congressman or who's the new senator in your state or who's the new, you know, city councilman or mayor in your state. But it's about getting behind uh, what brings freedom and what brings liberty to we the people. We are the people that hold that power. We are the people that hold uh, the power to look at the government and say, we don't like what you're doing over here. Mm -hmm. We will agree with you on this front over here, but we don't agree with you over here. It's learning how to uh, disagree with some things and take a stand and then mm -hmm. get behind the good at the same time. We kind of live in a society where group think is, is kind of like an epidemic. No one wants to think for themselves. So suddenly, if you, you know, get up and, and have a problem with what a Republican congressman says, it means that, you know, you're not really a Republican, and that's actually false. It just means that you have uh, your own way of thinking. You're an individual. You're a free thinker. You have the ability to say yes to one thing and no to the other. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, it's just about, it's about getting behind what, what, uh, what helps Americans, regardless of, uh, of where it comes from. So, so what you're trying to tell me is that, I shouldn't accept uh, the fact that uh, we have a full House and a full Senate and we can't defund Planned Parenthood. Now, is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> In a way, yes. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Yes. I tell people all the time, you know, someone got really excited, you know, because they were talking about, you know, we've got a full House, we've got a full Senate. And, you know, I just thought to myself, yeah, well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything anymore. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It doesn't necessarily mean that the R's that are in Washington are going to get things done in Washington. But, you know what I mean? But wait a minute. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy, we're talking with Janelle Batson. I, I am extremely honored to have her on uh, our program here on the network, the Exceptional Conservative Network. Uh, I met her through Lonnie Poindexter, in fact. Uh, and his wonderful show, he's an icon, Christian conservative icon on Urban Family Talk. Uh, and that's the Lion Chaser show. You can hear that Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. on Urban Family Talk. Uh, had an opportunity to connect uh, with uh, Janelle. I would love to connect with Kevin, but they have a one, they, was, they are the type of commentary. And I'm not going to hold up, I've wanted them on my own network. That's the type of commentary that needs to be out in the general public. They do a tremendous job at Red River Chronicle and at Red River TV. Uh, and I, 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 I want to tell you, Janelle, there are those who are thinking that we can stop. We, can, we don't have to pray anymore. We don't have to write any more editorials. We have the House. We have the Senate. And, oh, we have Donald Trump. So we literally, mm -hmm. we should be absolutely blind deaf and dumb at this point because we've gotten everything we wanted. Uh, it, it, do you subscribe to that? I think that you've just hit the nail on the head. Yes, mm -hmm. about um, the, how, as far as objective conservatism. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think it's the complete opposite. It is not the time to lie down. Mm -hmm. It is not the time to uh, put up our gloves and say, okay, we're good to go because we are in a fight unlike we have ever been, I believe, in history. I believe that what we're seeing right now is what I call a rebirth of America. America was birthed out of revolution. It was birthed out of uh, people coming together and deciding that they weren't going to um, accept tyranny yes. at all, mm -hmm. at any level. And just because we now have the House and the Senate and we have the President, it doesn't mean that tyranny is not going to try to rule as far as, you know, over the nation. So I believe that it's even more, I think, I think it's even more so that we should begin to speak out. We should begin to make our voices known. That's pretty much been my message ever since Donald Trump was elected. Um, with that, now it's time to go to war. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to war on behalf of your families. Now it's time to war on behalf of conservatism. Exactly. Now, I, first and foremost, um, to your husband, Kevin, uh, we send our prayers uh, for his speedy recovery. Uh, and yes. his great healing. Yes, we're hoping that the eye situation will get get, get figured out. <laughs> exactly, uh, because we here at the Exceptional Conservative Show, we don't have a problem praying in public. Uh, so yes. having yes, <laughs> uh, and we're praying as unto the Lord that He provide the recovery and healing uh, sevenfold over uh, of His eyes. 
uh, and also the lost time um, from his work uh, in, in terms of your development. Uh, and sincerely, yeah. you two are a great one-two punch. If, if if anything, you're more like Muhammad Ali. I tell you, very fast, very swift, very pretty. <laughs> I mean, y'all, y'all knock the knock it out of the park <laughs> with your commentary, and you leave them, you leave them down on the floor. If anybody ever watched Muhammad Ali for like eight rounds, it looked like he wasn't even interested in fighting. And then in the ninth round, just knocks him out and then keeps on going. And that's exactly the way their commentary is. It is just fruitful to, to hear. Uh, but I, I, I want to introduce uh, to, them, to, to those who might be on the left who is a very large audience uh, for the Exceptional Conservative Show here in Washington, D.C., because there ain't no 30% of my listening audience is Republican in Washington, D.C. Uh-uh, it ain't. <laughs> my download listeners are, are very faithful to me, apparently. They like what I hear, but they don't want to vote the way I vote. Uh, you happen to be, let, let me guess, you are an old white man. Uh, am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> No, far from. <laughs> uh, uh, as a uh, American woman who happens to be black, Negro colored, black, however way we wish to say it, or whatever, um, I, I want to know: since Trump's election, have you received a great deal more friction or more, uh, you know, invitation to discuss things with the left uh, regarding uh, where we go? in due season constitutionally? Um, well, I think I've pretty much experienced, um, I, I haven't met anyone yet <laughs> that's <been laughs> looking for a person that's actually been able to have a real conversation with anyone from the left. And I have not found, <laughs> I have not found one so far, so I am among those. Ladies I have not and found a single person. Ladies and gentlemen, we are okay, looking for someone to have a general <laughs> conversation, one of fluidity without a verb or vernacular that is oppressive or offensive uh, to discuss policy. <laughs> we really would like that. Uh, I want to talk with, talk with you about someone uh, who really struck up a chord. And as of this moment, mm -hmm. her sales... Uh, and, and trust me, she was not a Michael Jackson, uh, you know, in terms of music. But her sales are up 54,300,000% since she took off a white garb last night. Uh, I want you to talk about that young woman for just one moment. Uh, Princess Joy is her name. Uh, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's her name. Okay. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting because um, you know I didn't even I didn't really watch the Grammys but man um, I immediately knew who Joy Villa was. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no hiding <laughs> here. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the she is what I'm calling the conundrum right now. Yes. Because no one really knows how to how how do you handle. You know what I mean? How do you handle a 25-year-old woman from Orange County, California, um, who literally, you know, comes from Native American, Afro-American, and Italian descent? How do you handle that? You know, and she walks in with a, you know, <laughs> unveils this, you know, this this dress uh, that is an ode to Donald J. Trump. Mm -hmm. I just, no one could have ever predicted that at all. <laughs> wow. And I, I'm I, I must tell you, in an age where they have troubles uh, dressing Ivanka and Melania on the left, uh, that uh, gay immigrant who dressed her knocked it out of the... That is a beautiful dress. Uh, it's blue, am I correct? Uh, with mm -hmm. silver writing of Trump, yes. Make yes. America Great. Uh, and... Yes. Now, she immediately caught the attention of the world because that that picture has been around the it is the number one picture in the world right now her wearing that yes. dress um but it has also received a great deal of uh <clears throat> consternation from those on the left is it because she is part native american part black part italian uh, that uh she is receiving that grief um i 
think the reason why she's receiving a lot of the, you know, a lot of the hate that she's receiving is because, you know, in the entertainment industry, um, it is, I mean, I'd say overwhelmingly left. The entertainment industry, the arts, is overwhelmingly left. Mm -hmm. You don't walk into, uh, begin to even resemble a person who, is, who has conservative values, to even resemble that you even support um, uh, someone who, who is a conservative whatsoever. You just don't do it. They've been, you know, they've been using things like, you know, the Grammys and, and uh, all, all kinds of different ceremonies throughout um, throughout the past, particularly the last five years, to uh, basically pass anything conservative. They've been using these types of movements to do that. And so I, I don't believe um, that it was just about that. I believe it's because she walked in and, well, I mean, you, you talk about being triggered. I mean, I think she was probably triggered to the max if you saw, if you saw her walk in. I mean, what do you say to that? You know what I mean? Did I mean, you, she's from did, one of the most liberal, she's from one of the most liberal states, one of the most liberal counties in California. Yes. And she walks in with that on. Did, I just can't imagine. I thought it was. I mean, people's jaws probably hit the floor. <laughs> did, did you see the picture of Kanye West when he saw her? He went from a broad smile to one of uh, deep uh, <laughs> disconcern. Yes. You know, he was very, very bitter at this. And I can imagine her going in. Uh, but should we be in this country that opposed to one another uh, that our political views stunt our uh, ability to make money or to perform well or, or to get gigs, if, if, if per se mm -hmm. so? Exactly. I, I think that what's interesting is that, um, you know, I was looking through Twitter and there were several, many thousands of people, you know, who, uh, from the left, you know, obviously they're like, you know, well, she did this, this was, this was marketing, this means nothing. Well, here's the thing, though, is that even if this is about marketing, she took an, an enormous gamble. She took an enormous gamble when she did that because it could have been very bad marketing. Mm -hmm. um, what she did was what she did was she came in and was marketing. It worked and it worked beautifully. Now, I mean, her one of her songs, I believe, is called "I Make the Static." Is now number one on Amazon and it's climbing in iTunes. She it literally became, you know, known in a very big way uh, overnight, and mm -hmm. no one really knows what to do with it. And even like I said, even if it's about marketing. It still doesn't matter yes. because it was still a bold statement. I've heard some people that have said, okay, she did the exact same thing the last two years. She showed up in a very, um, you know, either provocative outfit. She showed up with an outfit that was, you know, really brought attention to her. But even in that, you, it may be safe to say that this was politically provocative if you really wanted to use that word. It was because she, she was really tampering with something that is a no-no. On the left, you just don't do that. You don't even mention Donald Trump's name, you know, uh, on, on the left. And so, I, I think it was very gutsy of her to do. You don't even have to agree with it, and she'll see that. I mean, it was it was a pretty it was pretty well played. Play, it was played <laughs> well indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna tell you, uh, I am so honored tonight. After being with the Trailblazers over the weekend, uh, with Bob Wallace, uh, Boyd. Uh, as well as Maxine Blake and uh, Richard Finley uh, and, and, and those individuals being honored uh, at that Trailblazers Award. We are talking tonight with one of America's great trailblazers to be, uh, Janelle Batts and her husband is not on the air with us, but Kevin Batts, they are trailblazers in their own rights. They have created uh, Red River uh, TV uh, and their conservative commentary out of Oklahoma is just, uh, it is to dine for you. And you know how I love to eat. Uh, it is great commentary uh, to listen to. And, and it's so missed in the rest of the culture. Uh, and I, I, I have no problems. Everybody knows I have no problem saying what I believe uh, on the air. I, I, and I've made these uh, reach outs before. I would love to have them on my network. Uh, and I will be following up with them, but you all have got to listen to them. I, I'm telling you, uh, from coast to coast, because there are people who are saying, where can we find urban conservatives? Where can we find 
uh, you know, the racial identity, conservatives or whatever, these two are stars. Uh, and you need to listen to their program. You need to actually uh, connect with them. Uh, Janelle, how can they connect with you and your radio program? Uh, forgive me, your radio television program. Uh, we have a, uh, well, regularchronicles.com is the actual uh, website. You can find our videos and uh, different articles and, and lots of good information that's on there. Um, also, though, as far as on social media, Red River TV is our social media page that connects both um, the videos that we do and our website. You can find myself, uh, Janelle Bass, on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You can also find my husband on Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, we, we try to connect with people as much as we can through social media. Um, you know, we're, we, um, we don't know what God has in store for the future, but we know that, you know, this is what we feel like that God has called us to do. And so we're trucking as far as, as far as, that's what they say in Oklahoma. <laughs> 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 anyway, we're going to keep trucking at this point, and we are going to, uh, Fight like never before. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I want to ask you just one other quick question before uh, we depart from one another. And I thank you so much. And I, I just want you all to know that Janelle is doing this out of the kindness of her, of her heart. I know some of you all have tuned in and you, you want to hear the bloviating Zeppelin. But unfortunately, the bloviating Zeppelin had the flu. Uh, so he couldn't be on tonight. And so I asked Janelle at the last minute. And I really, really thank you. Uh, for accepting the task of coming on uh, to come on and talk about uh, Joy Vila and con conservatism in America. Um, quite frankly, I, 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 and, and final thought here, is there hope for America um, from what we what you see what you're seeing right now? Uh, or are we still going along the lines of totalitarianism, whether it be Republican or Democrat? Uh, I believe that um, I believe that although we are sitting in a um, a better position after the election as far as conservatism in the United States, I very firmly believe though that this nation is very much hanging in the balance. Yes. I believe that this next year, the next two years, are really going to determine um, which direction that this nation is going to go. And I believe that that's one of the reasons why it's so important that conservatives um, be unafraid and be willing to speak out about the truth, to be willing to uh, write the truth, particularly with what's happening with the media. It's very important. The media is very important. The seven mountains of culture are very important that uh, we take these things back um, from the left and we, get, we begin to, um, you know, bring them to the forefront and start having real conversations and start actually promoting the truth. Exactly. Listen. Instead of just letting the left control the narrative. And also, also, uh, so, yeah, exactly. Also, so there's some establishment on the right that like to control the meat, the uh, narrative too, and Absolutely. and try to convince Absolutely. us that uh, all the smoke and mirrors, there's nothing they can do. Uh, we should be very concerned. Janelle, to you and your husband Kevin, God bless you all. You all do a wonderful job. I pray for your great success uh, and full impact on America. America needs to hear from you all. And I pray that they hear often from you. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Thanks for having me on, man. God bless. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Janelle Bass. Uh, she and her husband, Kevin, do a tremendous uh, job in commentary, spreading the good news of conservatism. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you some uh, fillers on what happened over the weekend with the Trailblazers Award and also want to talk about some other things that are happening because you know what? Uh <laughs> I'm talking with Jeff Mitchell right now. Jeff is a comedian. I want y'all to know, as serious as he is about politics and stuff, he's a comedian. <laughs> I'll be right back uh, right after these messages. Can we can we get that, that thing? Get that group? Oh, I love that group. Ah! Kick it! Ah! Uh.
I'm sorry. I know I should be doing commercials. I know. I'm sorry. But this groove is kicking. This is what is this? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna tell, I need to know what that song is. Smooth. I love that. Y'all gonna have to bear with me. I'm gonna play this thing through. I love this song. Ah. I like that. <laughs> Don't tell nobody differently. We'll be right back. <laughs> I love being me. And as an urban conservative, so should you. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance. Like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. Oh, you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> Thank you for the checking the call. And I really enjoy ICRN, your station, the station I listen to all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Dominique, for that. I just, I don't. Hi, it's your business diva here, Melanie Collette of Money Talk with Melanie on the Exceptional Conservative Network. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m., we talk all things money on a global, domestic, and household scale that affects you and your wallet. You don't want to miss it. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital, men in faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media, and analyze results, Sign up with eClincher today. Time for an unpleasant blind guy, conservative bite. I mean something that was just a blip in the news, but that, in my opinion, has a moral significance. 
It comes from foxnews.com, but don't worry, all you progressives out there that think everything that comes from the conservative right is fake news. The Associated Press did contribute to this story, which was published February the 10th, 2017. Headline. Trump tells Chinese President U.S. will honor one China policy. President Donald Trump told Chinese President Xi Jinping the U.S. would honor the one China policy months after Trump suggested he might use American policy on Taiwan as a bargaining chip between the two sides. Trump agreed at the request of President Xi to honor the policy, the White House said in a statement late Thursday. The one China policy had been a source of friction between the U.S. and China since Trump's election in November. Trump had questioned Washington's policy on Taiwan, which shifted diplomatic recognition from self-governing Taiwan to China in 1979. He said it was open to negotiation. China bristled at the comments Trump made. Trump told the Wall Street Journal in January that everything is under negotiation, including one China. The interview indicated at the time that Trump intended to shake up the relationship between Washington and Beijing, particularly on Taiwan. Beijing was initially rattled over Trump's call with Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, the first time an American president or president-elect had publicly spoken to Taiwan's leader in nearly four decades. Trump then said in a television interview that he didn't feel bound by a one-China policy unless we make a deal with China having to do with other things, including trade. Chinese media also went on the attack after Trump's one China policy comments, calling the then president-elect as ignorant as a child. The Global Times published a Chinese language editorial headlined, Trump, please listen clearly. One China cannot be traded. The White House sought to break the ice with China, Saying Wednesday, Trump wrote to President Xi, wishing the Chinese people greetings for the New Year and the Lantern Festival. President Trump stated he looks forward to working with President Xi to develop a constructive relationship that benefits both the United States and China, the statement said. China said it appreciated Trump's holiday greeting. When asked if Xi felt snubbed that Trump called other world leaders, A Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said, this kind of remark is meaningless. Up until Wednesday, Trump had been the only U.S. president in recent years not to have issued greetings when the holiday fell on January the 28th, triggering speculation in China as to whether it was an oversight or an intentional slight. All right, so what's the problem? The One China policy has been something the United States of America has recognized since the Carter administration. China owns much of our national debt, and we shouldn't offend them. The problem lies in the fact that to not recognize Taiwan, as well as the People's Republic of China, is tacit approval of the PRC's communist socioeconomic policy and even of its human rights abuses. This is the same thing that happens when the Dalai Lama visits the White House and is forced to enter through the back door without a proper welcome. People, let me ask you a question. What would the PRC do if the United States of America did say there were two Chinas, one of which did not employ communism as a means of socioeconomic control? What would the PRC do if when the Dalai Lama visited the White House We did, as a people, extend him a proper welcome. Will they send the triads over to collect the debt that they own? No. They would diplomatically moan, whine, and complain, and that basically would be it if our nation had a moral backbone. People, it's time to recognize right and wrong when we see it, and it's time to be plain in our speech about what is and is not consistent with the morals of the people of the United States of America. Just as we want our president to name Islamic terrorism when he's talking about Islamic terrorism, 
I think it's time and past time that we took a moral stance on Taiwan. It may cost us in some way, but I would rather our government speak out for what's right than be craven in the face of evil. I think we've had enough of that. And for the Trump mega supporters that are going to come down on me like a ton of bricks for this bite, consider how many of you complained that people on the progressive left acted like sycophants when it came to President Obama, agreeing with every decision of his because he was President Obama. As libertarians, as conservatives, we've said all along that we're different. We've said all along that it's the policy, not the person. Time for us to step up and prove it. This has been an unpleasant blind guy, conservative fight. <laughs>
uh, right next to me, uh, that that gorgeous little lady is uh, Mel Nicolette, uh, also my assistant, who's been with me from the very beginning when we started at TECS, uh, Deborah Frazier. Uh, she's virtually a right-hand person to me, and uh, she has encouraged me through the years not to give up, not to give in, not to give over. Uh, she's made phone calls for me. She's uh, sent out messages and stuff like that, and she promotes so Deborah uh, Frazier. If you ever wanted to see what she looks like, there she is. Shannon Wright, of course, you know what she looks like. She is the third vice chair uh, for the GOP in the state of Maryland. Okay, her husband right behind her, Michael. Uh, that very tall, handsome man uh, behind Deborah is Lottie Poindexter. Uh, he is co-host with the other tall guy right behind Melanie. Uh, well, that's not really saving much. Uh, Leprechaun's a tall next to Melanie. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's Ralph Chittam's senior. Oh, man, I'm telling you, absolutely wonderful, priceless picture. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I don't smoke anymore, Ken, but vape instead. So I guess I'm still Diva Melanie approved. Yes, you are Diva Melanie approved. Uh, and, and just look at that picture of Melanie. And this, it, it, see, this is why you should come to the ExceptionalConservativeShow.com, uh, the TECS page when I'm on the air. Uh, and come into that state of the art. That, state of the, that is state of the art chat technology right there. Uh, and what a beautiful picture of Melanie uh, and Maxine Blake. Maxine Blake. Uh, an Ohio civil rights icon, uh, well worthy uh, <laughs> of, uh, of acclaim and honor, indeed. Uh, but I, I just want to tell you, the picture that you don't see is the picture of my wife, who refused to take a picture with her husband. Speaking of Valentine's Day, refused to take a picture with her husband in front of that beautiful banner. First and foremost, I, I want to get y'all, is that a nice banner? Uh, the Exceptional Conservative Network banner. Uh, I hope it's a nice, I hope it's something that you all like. And if you come to CPAC uh, or Freedom Fest, you will see that banner. We will be um, getting individuals. You can take pictures in front of it. You'll meet all of the hosts that are there at those events. Uh, that's a big boy. That's a big man. I should have been like 6'11". That's a Shoulders so big and huge. Oh my goodness. My mom must have really cried when I came through the canal. <laughs> oh man. Thank you. Mary Brockman. See, this is the only approval I need. Mary Brockman said, very nice, Ken. And let me tell you why it's very nice. Um, because after after Wednesday night's show, um, the Lord came to me and, and, and basically said, Ken, you need a banner. And so... Melanie likes the banner. And so I, I, if anyone knows me, I am not the most creative man in the world. I, I, for me, uh, when you put bricks together, that works. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm the kind of guy, if, if the razor brand, if you don't have soy, you can just take the box of razor brand and just eat from it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, creativity is a little lost upon me. I, I didn't get that gift coming out of heaven. I, I may have a, not, a very nice IQ and everything, but Creativity. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so uh, I want to give kudos to this woman. Uh, and I'm surprised she didn't slap me Saturday when she saw me. Uh, but it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. No, it was about, yeah, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I sent a Facebook message to this woman and I said, The Lord has asked me to make a banner. Will you help me? And so I showed her the banner I made. And I want you to know Flintstone chewables uh, I look kind of like it. It was it's, it, it was a terrible design. It was terrible. Charles Barkley kind of terrible design. Uh, <laughs> and this woman who is working on her doctorate degree, studying for financial licensing, running a the Women's Federation of the GOP in New Jersey, uh, a professor of technology at Rowan 
University. It with all the stuff that she got and then running her own show, which is uh, one of the top daytime conservative talk shows in this country. Running her own show. That woman actually said yes. She didn't she didn't she with no sweat, it went no attitude, it went no mm -mm, no you do oh no you ain't calling me. It was none of that. Melanie Collette is the sweetest little lady. She said yes. And I thank God for her because the banner I would have put up would have been a disaster. She created the design for that uh, and listened to me give editorial commentary. Uh, and I, I tell you, if it were not for Melanie on my side, where would I be regarding that banner? Uh, and this is really, I, I give this all to God. I know I didn't get a chance to talk about politics tonight, and I will. Um, and the Trailblazer event was magnanimous, uh, meeting so many wonderful people. Uh, Bri Bria Marie, she is so sweet. She's just the cutest little girl. Uh, I know she's a grown woman, but she's the cutest little girl. Uh, <laughs> she's like a daughter to me. But uh, if you go to the front page of the exceptionalconservativeshow.com, you can click on there uh, and download Bria Marie's music, but get ready. We are trying to promote 1 million pulls on the 9th of April, 1 million pulls of her album. We want a Christian conservative woman to have the number one album in the country. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. I'm sorry, I've been around Renard Jackson too long. Uh, <laughs> I'm not name dropping either people. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just had a wonderful weekend. I work with some of the greatest people in the world. Uh, got news that we will be on Media Row at CPAC. We're working on that. Lonnie Poindexter and Ralph uh, are working on that collectively. Also, uh, Melanie Collette will be there. Shannon and Mike will be there. Uh, and uh, Ralph and Lonnie, of course, will be there. And they will be broadcasting live from CPAC. Uh, during their regular hours, uh, I want you all to tune in uh, to both SHR and as well uh, TECN so that you can get this top of the line uh, coverage. Uh, I've run out of time. I just want to say to you, thank you all so much for tuning in and listening. Uh, we'll have more powerful interviews and guests later on this week. But if you don't remember anything I said tonight, please remember this. God bless America. It's time for America to bless God. Good night and God bless you.